Well, Seamus Ennis' um, tune that I love is uh, this following one. But he always told a story before, and he told it in Irish. And uh, unfortunately, my Irish are not good enough to recant it in Irish, but here it goes anyway. And it's a true story. It was a local fiddler, and he loved everything to do with the Dina Shee, the fairy folk, the small folk, whatever you want to call them. And he'd go out every night to the fairy rath. That's not the W-R-R-T-H, but the R-R-T-H. And he'd go and listen to them making their music and making merry and dancing. And like clockwork, the fairies would come out at sunset and they'd go up to the rat and they'd dance around. The fairy king and the high queen would sit there while all the fairies would make merry. Now, the fiddler would go out and listen every night. He'd listen to these beautiful, intricate tunes they'd be making. And he'd try and remember them the next day. You see, come the dawn, the fairies would return to their beds and they'd go asleep and they'd go back into the rat. And the fiddler would go home and he'd have remember the tune for a little while, but he'd not remember it for very long. Anyway, one night he went out and he was listening to them making the merry tunes and he could hear them. And he fell asleep on the bank, the turf, with the tune going ahead in his head. He woke up the next morning, the dawn was happening and the fairies had all gone into the rat. And uh, he went out wandering and there was no sign of anything, no sign of any fairies. But there, spackling among the grass, was a tiny little golden ring. Tiny, tiny thing. So see, it must belong to one of the Dean of She, the fairy folk, the small folk, whatever you want to call them. And he stuck it in his waistcoat and he went home to his mother. He got home, the mother was making the breakfast. He sat down, had a cup of tea, ate the breakfast, said nothing to her and went off to the bed. He woke up next day about four o'clock and he went out again up to the fairy rat and lay on the bank of turf to listen to the music. Like clockwork, the fairies came out, the Dina Shee, the small folk, the fairy folk came out and they were making the music, making merry and their sounds of their voices were like tinkling bells as he listened. And the music was like wispy bird sound. Anyway, in amongst all this sound, he could hear the lamentation, the crying of one of the fairy musicians. Turned out it was the fairy piper who'd lost his ring, the gold ring, the night before. And he was exclaiming in a loud voice to all the fellows around him. He says, if anybody gives me back the ring or finds the ring, he says, I'll give you and grant you one wish. Well, the fiddler stuck his hand in his waistcoat and, and he jumped up from the bank and he rang over to the fairies. And he says, I have the ring that was once lost. It's found. He says, I found it last night and there it was lost. He says, and I picked it up and here it is. You can have it back, says he. Well, says the fairy, fid, fair, fairy piper, says he, you can have one wish. What do you want? Uh, the fiddler scratched his head and he said, I tell you what, if you can give me that jig you were playing the other night, I'd be most appreciative. And sure enough, the fairy piper gave him the jig, and this jig has the name that we remember to this day, and it's called the Gold Ring, and it goes like this. Mm -hmm. 